Come to the fourth oral question, Baroness McIntosh of Pickering. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper and refer to my interests on the register. I call the Minister, Baroness Veer of Norberton. My Lords, the Government holds regular meetings with the road haulage industry regarding driver shortages and the impact on supply chains. On 16 June, I hosted an industry roundtable alongside the Employment Minister. We are supporting HGV driver training through apprenticeships, training for job seekers and encouraging drivers who need to renew their driver certificate of professional competence to return to the sector. McIntosh, Pickering. I welcome the Government action. Uh, Brexit and Covid combined have in part led to uh, the crisis that we face, as well as the closure of test centres during the Covid pandemic last year, preventing training of new drivers. The industry is stepping up to the plate by agreeing to pay drivers more. Will, my government look, will the Government look very carefully at encouraging women drivers to take up lorry driving, and also by adding HGV drivers to the UK skills shortage list, as well as trying to hold even more uh, training test centres and the reissuing of licences. If my noble friend doesn't mind, I'll focus on the first of those questions, um, and that's about. Uh, well, firstly, I, I'd also welcome any any more pay for uh, professional drivers because I think they do an outstanding job. Uh, but I do recognise what my noble friend says about diversity. It is a very uh, uh, white male. Uh, sector. And I think there are huge opportunities for the sector to diversify, and when they come up with plans to do so, for example, the Logistics UK, the Year of Logistics, which I hope we will get underway soon, I will be very happy to support them. Ms. Quinn. Uh, my Lords, can I pick up on the second part, then, of um, Baronet, Noble Baroness uh, McIntosh's question and ask about adding lorry drivers to the post-Brexit skills occupation list and also asking for a, a period not just of six months but of 18 months, which I understand is what the industry wants in order to be able to uh, attract, recruit and train new British drivers. Well, my lords, I think that the industry needs to do an awful lot more to, re to recruit, train uh, and retain its staff. And perhaps I'll be able to get into that a little bit later. But in terms of uh, uh, foreign la labour, um, the UK labour market has changed dramatically due to the pandemic. Uh, many UK workers face un an uncertain future. There will be employment uh, opportunities within the professional driving sector, and I hope that they will apply for them. Ms Foster of Oxton. My lords. Lorry drivers have been the hidden heroes of this pandemic, and they deserve our full support. So would my noble friend the Minister agree with me that jobs such as these require good skills, training and investment, and are equally as important to driving our economy forward as any university degree? Yeah, yeah. Well, I do agree that they have been uh, some of the heroes uh, during the pandemic, and I frequently uh, ensure that I tell them so, because I think they've done a fantastic job. But I do think that it's time for the industry to step up just a little bit more. Um, on, the 31st, on the 1st of August last year, we suspended the HGV levy. This has saved the industry uh, hundreds of millions of pounds, uh, basically for each truck, about £900 a year. So, for example, if you're a, a haulier with 3,000 trucks, you've saved £2.5 million. That could train 800 new drivers. I ask the industry to recruit those people and train them. Lord Rosser. Finding effective solutions means identifying, first of all, the cause of the driver and other staff shortage problems, which could lead to higher uh, food prices. I get the impression from the noble lady, the minister's answers, that the government don't accept any responsibility for the present situation. But can I clarify that? Does the government think it is the um, staff shortage problems are due to the end of free movement and the way it's now implementing border controls or due to the effects of repeated COVID lockdowns? Or does the government think it has no responsibility for what the staff, the staff shortage is and that it's due to low pay and poor terms and conditions of employment by the industry, inadequate manpower planning by the industry or a failure by the industry to invest in proper training programmes to meet future manpower needs? Well, I mean, 
all of the above, uh, and th this is the issue that we've been facing. I've been roads minister now for two years, and I had this conversation with the haulage sector two years ago, um, and it was very clear then that foreign labour would not be available to them. They have known that this is coming down the track. The TSC did a report in 2016 pointing out exactly what the sector needed to do to address the, the, the shortage that it had then, and yet still not enough has been done. But what I will accept is the government stands ready to help, uh, and therefore we, were, we, we listen to the industry, we work alongside the industry in terms of, for example, HGV uh, testing. I have doubled the number of tests every week from a pre-COVID pre level. So we are doing everything we can, and we need the industry to work in partnership with us. Tweet. That goods kept flowing into the United Kingdom after the end of the transition period, the government recognised that there was a shortage in our capacity in our ports, so they deferred checks for the hauliers. Why isn't the government deferring the immigration rules for hauliers themselves to ensure that they are able to bring the goods into this country properly? Hauliers are able to bring the goods into this country uh, uh, properly. Um, the issue is actually that you know, there's a shortage in the, in the, in the UK uh, market. There's also a shortage in the EU market, actually, in many economies uh, in terms of drivers. But what I can announce to, the, to, the house, to your Lordship's House today is that I have just uh, temporarily extended driver's hours. And whilst I uh, accept that that is definitely not a long-term solution, we must make sure that driver safety uh, should not be compromised and operators must notify the DFT. Lord McLaughlin. The announcement my honourable friend has just made will be very welcome to the industry indeed, but speaking to those people in the industry, they say that they are facing the biggest crisis that they, have, uh, they can recall as far as driver recruitment is concerned. Will the Government give consideration to temporary lifting uh, of uh, CPC regulations and the need for those CP regulations for domestic drivers now we are no longer in the European Union? I thank my noble friend for his intervention. I have looked very carefully at driver CPC. Look, it is, it is my opinion that uh, we need to put the professional back into professional driver. Driver CPC is a really good way of uh, ensuring ongoing training for the profession. It is one day a year, which I think is about the right amount of training, and it makes sure that they are up to date uh, and they maintain their skills and their knowledge of the roads. The government does have uh, uh, funding available to support those who do have a C plus E licence who need to get their driver CPC uh, um, and therefore you know, there is a way uh, for people to upgrade their qualification. Lord Billamoria. My Lords, as President of the CBI, uh, employers are facing the perfect storm of staff shortages as the economy reopens. Would the Minister firstly agree that the Government should immediately update the immigration shortage occupation list as well as uh, helping workers gain skills? And secondly, would the Minister agree that with cases projected to rise to up to 100,000 a day, instead of waiting until August the 16th, that from July the 19th, instead of people having to isolate after coming in contact with a COVID-positive in individual, we should have a test and release system, including using lateral flow tests, which would allow people to carry on with work? I think I've already answered the Noble Lord's first question. On the second question, obviously, the government will be watching the economy um, as we go through this period of lifting the restrictions uh, and monitor its impact very carefully. Twitty. It appears to be blaming the industry and blaming the pandemic, but as she referred to discussions in 2016 and 2018, does the government not have some responsibility in this respect? This crisis was eminently predictable, given the age profile of drivers uh, and the likely reaction of East European drivers to Brexit. My, my Lord, does the government need more powers, more responsibilities to establish an emergency programme of training for qualified HGV drivers and to implement it in concert with the industry, the unions and the FE sector now? Well, I have said that, that um, this is a partnership between the industry and the government. We will do what we can, and we need industry to step up to the plate. And I would reiterate, the HGV level, levy has been lifted and will be lifted until mid-2022. That is a huge saving for the sector. They have the money that they could now invest into skills, and I would very much encourage them to do so. Lord Bradshaw. These are very, very hungry for traffic. The minister has got a list which I gave her of simple modifications which could be made. There are resources available and will she use the idle resources on our railways to better advantage to move freight? 
Well, the noble lord will know that I'm a great fan of rail freight and where we can shift it to rail, and it's appropriate, we certainly should do. But can I just say, you know, one of the things that we really should be doing with the industry is setting up a clear and transparent charter which sets out good practice. It sets up decent minimum standards for our professional drivers, a commitment to initial and ongoing training. It's time to put professional back into professional drivers, and I would be very happy to support the industry to work towards such a charter for the hauliers and for their customers. Lord Book. My Lord, it isn't just lorry drivers. I detect skill shortages in every part of my day-to-day -day personal and business life, shortages of roofers, data scientists, maintenance engineers, digital marketeers, gardeners, and many more. Does the government have an analytical grip of the functioning of the UK's labour market? Do we have appropriate educational skills and immigration policies to enable our economy to reap its full potential? Well, I think any government minister could probably spend about an hour talking about uh, all of our responses to um, the uh, uh, pandemic, also in terms of changes to our labour market and what will be needed in diff different parts of the sector. And, of course, one of the big things that the government's doing very focused on is apprenticeships. And in the haulage sector in particular, uh, we did exactly as the sector asked. We increased the C plus E apprenticeship from £6,000 to £7,000 a year. We now need the industry to step up take that £7,000 as a £3,000 incentive if they do so before the 30th of September, and let's get more people into jobs.